Hey, Howard Chewy here, and here's the Samsung Omnia 2 on Bell. Now, as you know, Bell just launched their HSPA network, so here's one of their launch phones. Now, the vital stats for the Omnia 2 are that it has a OLED display with WVGA resolution that's uh, 800, 40, 800 something by 480, 800 by 480. Uh, Windows Mobile 6.5 and if I remember correctly a 800 megahertz Samsung processor. Let's check it out. So here's the Omnia. Let's uh, turn this on while we wait for to check out the rest of the phone while it's booting up. Check out the rest of the package. Bell SIM card holder thing. Samsung CDs, so uh, it comes with some software, a stylus, because of course the Omnia 2 has a capacitive touch screen, and you get a micro USB charging cable, 3.5 millimeter headset with an answer button. This is you know, you plug your headphones into here, so if you don't want to use the included ones, which are the fit inside your ear variety, then you can still, you won't lose uh, microphone capabilities. And of course, here's a micro USB charger for your wall. So let's check out the Omnia 2. Just let me get an Omnia 1. One moment, please. Okay, so here's the Omnia 2 and the Omnia i9-10. Alright, let me unlock this. The screen's still kind of sticky. Don't worry, it's brand new. That's nothing a bucket of fried chicken won't fix. Alright, let's compare them. So, now let's compare browser speeds. Now, I don't know if you remember a while back, but I made a special static version of the forums, howardtree.com slash speedtest. And it's a useful tool for comparing which phone can render Howard Forms faster. So I have it loaded up already. Let's just refresh and see which one can draw the page faster. No, Opera. Well, fully featured isn't the fastest browser on the block. And yeah, even with the 800 megahertz processor, it doesn't, the Omnia, oh, there you go. Noticeably faster than the Omnia i9-10, although it still could be faster, in my opinion. So anyways, that's the 800 megahertz processor. Actually, if you if you look, you'll notice that the colors on the Omnia 2 are much more pleasing to the eye. Let me just find the... where did Opera go? You'll notice that the colors on this one are much more intense. That's because this is an OLED display, whereas this is just a regular LCD. Colors are more intense, blacks are blacker, that sort of thing. It's really good for looking at photos. And uh, it works okay outside as well. Now one difference is that here, this has a optical mouse. Uh, you can use it to scroll around. The Omnia 2 has this. It's really just a button. It doesn't work as a mouse or anything. It's actually a cube and as you saw earlier, you can use it to switch between tasks. So you press it, or launch the menu. So you see, press it once, it loads up the uh, TouchWiz menu, and you touch and hold it, and it brings up a task launcher, or task switcher, I should say. So this is TouchWiz 2. You'll notice it's a, uh, see on this one, this is TouchWiz 1, besides the widgets, which you also get here. You, um, the menu, 
You see here, you the menu is like this. Oh, sorry. And then you can also go like this. It's kind of stupid. Here, it's much more logical. You go left, and you go right. Oops, I pressed something. Okay, so you get better screen, faster processor. And now this is a Windows Mobile 6.5 device. So if you don't like TouchWiz, what you can do is go back to the standby screen and press here. And oh, it's Windows Mobile 6.5. You see, see, even with the 800 megahertz processor, it's Windows Mobile, it still bogs down a little. So TouchWiz 2, this is what Samsung wants you to use. It's really a replacement for the Windows Mobile um, menu system. And actually, it's similar. Many of Samsung's devices now use it. The TouchWiz user interface has got the widgets, and so this mimics the feel. It's not just available on their Windows Mobile devices. So let's check out some of the apps. Here's the phone book. Messaging client. Okay, there's the Windows Mobile messaging client. You got Opera, Media Player. So this looks like a Samsung specific one. Talk more about that when I've had a chance to play with it. FM radio, photo app. It's a Windows or a Samsung specific one. Let's try the camera quickly. Alright, actually, it looks quite similar to the one on the i910. So uh, let me just get a picture of this bell box. So let's look at the picture. Yep, quite similar to the i910s. Clock, memo, schedule, settings. This is a DLNA program, so what you can do is you can use your DLNA TV. Many of Samsung's higher end models are DLNA enabled and you can what you can do is take pictures or video with this phone and then play them back over your DLNA TV. Your TV has to be connected to your network and this has to be connected to your network via Wi-Fi. So here's your Windows Mobile stuff, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote. So you can edit, add programs to this thing. And one feature which Samsung makes a big deal about is this cube. You can use it to launch programs. It's not terribly useful as you can see. What you can do is you can you can spin it around. You know who would like this? A cat. You can uh, configure this to launch that. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but. I guess they had to put something extra in that doesn't do anything. Now, one thing I don't like about these Windows Mobile phones is that you have this when you have Windows Mobile, which you access like this normally via the Start menu. But then you've got TouchWiz on top, which you access like that, and then you know you have more programs here. It just makes for an uneven or an inconsistent user experience but that said since it runs Windows Mobile it'll run many many Windows Mobile programs so that's nice anyways that's the Omnia 2 those are my first impressions I'll have a complete review once I've had a chance to play with this more so uh, check back in a couple of days so I'm Howard Choi and that's the Samsung Omnia 2 on Bell thanks for watching